Hey guys, Brent Hall here, talking today about mortise locks, rim locks, and box locks. And so, I wanted to explain kind of how they're put together. I did another video on kind of fixing up a mortise lock. Today I'm gonna to get more into box locks and how to get those working. Come join me. Looking just at kind of lock lore, you know, the earliest types of locks were wood locks, okay? Were wood bolts and things like that that would have been used to secure a door. Shortly thereafter, things like this started to appear, which is an open face lock. An open face as opposed to a box lock or a rim lock because there's no box, there's no nothing covering it. So, you know, you can see that this, you know, here's your slide bolt to lock the door. And then here's your thing to lift up off a latch. It would have had a little key, little thing that would have cl clicked here. And then on the other side of the door, you just would have had a, a, a little knob like this, right? So very early type of door. What happens is, is that, you know, this essentially becomes this, right? Because they put a box on top of it. This one actually has a key that, that opens it up. I'll show you that here. This comes from a company called Heritage Metalworks. There's also a company called Ball and Ball, which does some stuff. And so made today, but they're, they're made using historic methods. And so I'm actually just going to take these screws out here, just show you what the inside of this thing looks like so that you can get a, a view on you know, what, what, what's happening here. They're very simple mechanisms. They are basically like this, right? There is a, a spring, right? This is, this is a, you know, kind of holds this down. This becomes just a spring that it's a very simple contraption, right? There's not, you know, sometimes you, you take apart a new mortise lock and you'll have uh, a lot of springs and a lot of kind of complicated things. These early rim locks really aren't that complicated. And so I'm encouraging you to take them apart. All right, I just screwed that up. <laughs> so look what's happening here, guys. Okay, you've got the, the deadbolt and the catch, right? And so both of these are, are based on what's gonna happen inside here. I'm gonna lift the lock part of it out of the, out of the way. I'm gonna take this out. Can you kind of see that there's a bar there? There's the springs back here on how that would move back and forth. And then here's your deadbolt. I'm gonna take out the deadbolt, right? And you're seeing the, uh, the different spring mechanisms, right? See how that is made up of this spring? There's one spring that runs around there. And then when you're locking or opening your door, these other things are just fastened in there. All of this stuff is fixed. And then I got more springs back here that would work for my lock. So when my lock goes in back here, and I'll put it behind these springs, right? Now I've got, see how that, what's happening there? This is getting pushed. Now, what's gonna keep it in place there? That's where this little key cog is, right? So it's going to drop in here and that holds it in place, right? If that wasn't in there, it kind of springs out too far. This is holding, holding it in place. And then when I open or close my door, right? See what's happening there, All right? It's pushing against those springs and it's moving the catch back and forth. So it looks kind of scary when you open it up because it's like, ah, but it is just springs and latches, right? That are mechanically kind of put together. And then when my key comes in here, it moves this thing back and forth and causes my deadbolt to open or close. I think it's fun the way it's put together. It's kind of a puzzle. So early box locks were iron like this, were iron locks. Later, they started to do brass. Sometimes you would see an iron lock with a brass handle, right? As the, as the client could afford it, or a chrome one in this case. We did this for a client on a job. The only difference between the brass and the cast is just the, the covering on the outside, right? So if I open this up, you would see basically that same kind of working mechanism. And this becomes popular from, you know, the you know, 17, 1800s into uh, the 1920s and 1930s, as these were really popular in col colonial revival houses. I love the rim lock because you, get such a distinctive feature on the outside of the door. We made this up for a client. You can see that the door opens. See that this is what your hardware is on the other side. And these rim locks can be rectangular. They can be vertical rectangulars like this one, right? So they, and this is a kind of a square box, but your catch, okay, because you have a catch that, that fits inside the door, 
is, as you can see on this thing, kind of mortised and notched into the trim. So we put this together so that they can see. Here's a little bit more decorative of a, uh, a catch on this door, and it too is kind of cut into the trim. So you will be needing to cut it into the trim. It doesn't go into the jam, right? And oftentimes the throw on these uh, locks isn't, isn't very far. So sometimes people will want to put a, a secondary lock on because that's only going to throw in about this far, right? And sometimes deadbolts will throw in, you know, an inch and a half. And so for security, you may not want that. For decoration, it's just fabulous. Now, a little bit later in the Victorian period, this is probably 1880s, they would take you know, your traditional box lock and they decorate it, okay? And so for a while, this kind of decorative box lock, rim lock, uh, was, was a great way to go. Now this one too has a little throw, a little catch there, so you can have some privacy in your room. If you wanted to put that together, it has a key that I don't have, but I'm gonna open this thing up. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna find. Okay, so it's a little bit uh, rusty and um, here's my spring, okay? This is gonna move the door in and out, right? And so I took the top off and I'm just kind of looking at it. I got a little blower here in case this... Looks like there was a cat here in this house. Uh, I'm not sure why we got so much hair there. But right, I'm cleaning this up. Now you can see there's a little bit of cobwebs in here, okay? Those springs are a little bit rusty, okay? But you can see the, the different parts and pieces here that are going back and forth. This spring is only for that little throw bolt. Notice that that spring came out. Sometimes what you wanna do is you wanna take a picture of it before uh, you get too far into it so that you'll be like, ah, where did that piece go? And so you, you can figure out where it goes, in fact, taking a picture of it's a very good idea. What happens is you start looking at these things, you start recognizing a lot of the same features. Now, I'm pulling this spring out just to kind of show you. It does have some rust on it, okay? But you can see kind of the, some original metal back there. But all I'm gonna do here is spray this thing with some WD-40. Now, someone pointed out on the other one that WD-40 is not really a grease. It's not really a, an oil. It's a property that helps uh, with rust. So I'm actually gonna use this now, but then when I close it up, when I go to take care of it, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just let it sit on there so that it kind of beats down that rust. But then once that WD-40 dries, I'm actually gonna put some three-in-one oil or something a little bit heavier on these things to kind of grease them up and get them going again. But again, there's nothing that I can take this whole thing apart, right? And now that I've sprayed it, I can take each individual part and just start cleaning it, right? Just start taking my rag, might even take a little steel wool, right, to this stuff and just kind of get make sure the rust is off there and just kind of clean this up. But there's nothing wrong with this lock. It's got a little patina on it, right? But this will go right back in place right there on that thing and move in and out and I'm gonna take each one of these things out and just clean it up. And there's, and there's nothing that's not gonna keep this thing from functioning for another you know, 50 years before you have to kind of clean it up again. But what I've found most times is that these things, all that they require is just a little bit of love and uh, they can uh, work again for a long time. Okay guys, rim locks, right? They're a great decorative item that functions really well really well made, uh, no cheap parts inside, but probably need a little uh, love and attention to get them working again. Uh, some great resources for you, Heritage Metalworks, and then uh, Ball and Ball, places that actually custom make and actually have these in catalogs ready off the shelf. So a good resource for door hardware. Um, notice too, how small these little handles are. They're really teeny and cute, right? And so in the Colonial Revival period, especially if you have a house from like the 20s, 30s, 40s, you'll sometimes have these. I love these rim locks because they have, they're so character defining, they're so interesting to me. But uh, really, if you wanna you know, kind of make a splash, even if you got cheap doors, make a splash with some hardware, this is a great way to go. Remember that uh, awesome rim lock that's at Winter Tour that's like huge, that's on the back of that door? That too is kind of that character defining piece. And notice where that you know knob sits. It sits way out on the rail. So again, it's, it's one of those disconnects that you look at and you go, oh, that's cool. The knob's way out here. It's not really on that style sometimes. So it's a great character defining fe detail that just adds tons of charm. Passion for Craft Podcast is now live and going. It's on Apple and Spotify and all these different places. Uh, there's also a Patreon page, Patreon Passion for Craft, where you will get access to 
tons of great information, a Discord page, access to my library, access to things that are just magical. So great learning tools. And if you want to elevate your game and kind of improve what's going on, that thing's a great way to go. There's a five, 15 and $25 level. And so uh, that journeyman level, that middle level is where my access to the library is right there. And I just think it's a great resource and great tool for improving your game, for growing in craftsmanship, growing and building. I'm Brent Hall. Thanks for watching.